G'day, my name's Darrell Webb. Today we're going to have a look at the One Leaf AI NV400 Eagle. This is the two times base mag model. <coughs> it has a IR light and a laser range finder with a ballistic calculator. So this thing is pretty cool. I've done this video a little bit different. Um, all the stuff you're going to see, you know, I sort of filmed already. Today I'm just doing um, sort of my pros and cons, but all the clips you've seen here where I've actually done some hunting with it, um, I've tested it, set up its ballistic calculator and tested that to verify that the ballistic calculator works. Um, I did some daytime footage. Um, I filmed it with a camera going for a HDMI um, screen so you can actually see all the menus and all the, the widgets and whatnot that are on the screen. And um, we went sort of through everything that this thing that you may want to know. Anyway, so sit back, um, grab a coffee or a beer depending on what time of the day it is when you watch this. And... Um, Let's go over this thing and see if this is the type of thing you may uh, may like because I really like it. Now let's get into the review. When you receive this, it is packaged a little bit different because I've had this out and sort of set it up. But um, let's just look at the box. So it's the Commander NV100 Eagle. So it's a 2 to 26 by 50. Um, 4K recording, 13 times digital zoom, day, night, night vision scope. Digital day slash night vision scope. Uh, 13 times digital zoom, 4K, 120 frames a second, 1300 foot detection range um, so now you can take a photo profile manager 6 one shot 0 IP67 rating HD port or HDMI port um, picture in picture um, you can see it there so you can have it with the range finder you can have it without the range finder you can have it with the range finder and the illuminator um, 2 to 26 focus range 16 foot to 0 um, just some of the features it's got day starry and night um, settings so it does 4k video up to 120 frames a second all the way down to full HD 30 frames a second its night vision range is 1300 foot digital zoom 13 times e-compass yes first focal plane second focal plane switching yes one shot zero backlight buttons yes you can turn them off um, picture in picture yes battery reversal alert six profile manager seven reticle options with five colors aspect screen 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 switching i've actually found 4 by 3 gives me a little bit more viewing area um, it's got a external hd port so it's a hdmi port and ip67 um, just saying on there it's 4k recording real 4k microphone gyroscope rangefinder electronic compass and digital zoom and i think that's it is it no pictures of the reticles or anything no there you go all right let's um let's open it up and see what you basically get in there and what these parts do <coughs> Okay, when it comes, it comes with the mounts actually upside down for packaging. Um, just has to flip them over and a good little book in there and a cleaning cloth. All right, um, so you get a couple of eyepieces, um, two different lengths, they're good. You get a battery charger that can charge 18650s and the 18500 that comes supplied for the uh, scope and the 18650 supplied for the um, IR illuminator. Comes with a little hex key. Um, it comes with two battery caps, so you can see that um, on the cap there you've got a 18500, and um, and that's probably like a normal size cap. So that lets you put in an 18500, but if you want to run an 18650, you can use this cap, and then it suits an 18650 length. Um, comes with a eyepiece cover for going on the back of the scope. It comes with a sunshade for um, daytime use in very well. You've got. A lot of sunlight uh, coming in from the side. I'll use that today because it's quite sunny out here. You get the main device itself. You get a couple of spare O-rings. Get some more Allen keys. You get a USB-C charging um, lead for charging the actual unit. And you get a HDMI to mini HDMI, or maybe it's mini HDMI to micro HDMI lead for um, going out of that. Then you got the unit itself. Um, this one comes with a rangefinder, which can be um, mounted or, or unmounted, so that's optional. And it comes with the IR illuminator, um, and that pretty much has a button on the back for turning on and a focus in, and it comes with its mount. It comes with a nice little set of scope rings as well. Um, they look all right. Anyway, we'll have a better look at that. 
All right, so we'll just go over some of its sort of basic features and what you sort of get on it. Uh, I said there's a laser range finder, it's optional, um, but uh, it just goes on with a couple of little Allen keys on a Picatinny type mount, and it's um, it's wide in, it's got uh, contact points and it. it's wide into the actual scope, so that's uh, that works out well. Um, also, there's a good little laser illuminator, um, or IR illuminator. It's pretty much it's focusable from you know spot to a flood beam, but with this, you can see it changes the length. And it's got three little indicators on the side here. So when you turn it on, you've got one, two, and three. You can just keep on tapping the power button, and it will go through one, high, low, medium, you know, low, medium, high, however you want to look at it. Um, I said it came with um, two caps. Um, one's 18650 length, 18500 length, the other one is. And it comes with a decent little set of scope rings that has these little Picatinny mounts on top. And that's how you can mount the Illuminator mount. So you can have it there or forward. I found when it was forward, it was um, it got in the way of my focusing here a bit. Uh, I guess we'll start off with the scope. We'll look at the front. So there is a little lens cap uh, for the 50mm lens. The lens cap does actually have a hole in it. And that works as a sunshade for daylight. Because this has a star Sony Starver sensor in it. And when... Um, when it's daylight, it's very easy for it to be, um, I guess, probably blown out by the, too much sunlight. So it does come with a little sunshade too. Um, when you come to starry, no -mo starry night or, um, or just straight out night mode, you can flip that wide open and use the full lens for better light gathering ability. Um, next down there is your focusing. This focuses the whole picture. Obviously you don't need to focus the, the reticle in this like, a, like you would with an add-on because it's not an add-on, it's, uh, it's all focused in there. Let's come down and see these nice little scope rings. And we have a um, the range finder. The range finder user also has a, gray, a, a green laser pointer in there. You can turn it on and off with the menu it's for marking things for other people who can't see. Um, and you can actually adjust its windage and elevation with these two little screws here to actually put it on to match your uh, crosshairs. Um, moving back further, we have the IR Illuminator. I found this actually be quite good, and if you use its focus and focus it in, as in zoom it in, um, as you zoom up the zoom on the actual scope, it's uh, it's more than good enough, and I've seen things quite clearly out to about 200 metres. I have no problems at all with the IR Illuminator. Um, if you've used a lot of IR stuff before in the night, you'll work it out really fast. You need lots of IR light to try and light things up further down, so you really want to turn this in quite focus it right in so you've got a good little spot down where you're looking and um, and it gives out more than enough light IR. Oh yeah. It's 850 nanometer in this one and um, it's 8 watt. So um, it just mounts on and it's actually movable. So you can move it to up and down and you just tighten it with this. I found it's good. I tighten it up but I keep it loose enough so that I can still move it around. If I get holdovers with a ballistic calculator I can really zoom this in and, and move it to where it needs to be. And that's more than enough movement and it is meant to be there. Got a quite smart little design there with two little rings that does a good job um, on this side i'll spin it around so you can see it here this is sort of like your uh, your interface so this is where the sd card or the micro sd card stored I'll get this off illuminates a bit in the way there but anyway it will come off um, what else is there? there's a mini hdmi port and also the usb-c for charging they're all o-ringed in there so there's no worries about moisture or anything like that. But yeah, so there's your, they call it a HD port. It's where you, you plug in a HDMI, micro, mini, whatever it is. Um, the USB-C for charging. And under this cover, there is a little, try not to block it with the light. There's a little micro SD card in there. So you can change them on the fly or whatever you need to do. And put big ones, it did come with supply. I think it's a 64 gig one, but yeah, there is also optional 128. And, um, and that's how you sort of run that. Uh, moving back down further along, you've got your menu and your OK button. So pretty much this is a, it's a dialable. So if you're going through the menus, you want to make adjustments, it's pretty much, it clicks and it dials and you can move all, all the way through, move down to the menu, click, make your adjustment what you need, click it again, um, save it. And um, it also activates the range finder. So when you're using the range finder, if you, when you're just looking through the scope normal, if you hit this, the range finder, um, actually the screen sort of wakes up a bit more. Hit it again, it turns the range finder on. Um, you put it onto the target, hit it again, turns the range finder off and it displays the distance on the screen. And if you've got the ballistic calculator on, it um, also makes, marks the holdover, how much you need the holdover. Then as you come back, 
uh, we'll turn this around so you can sort of see it a bit better maybe these are your sort of three quick buttons um, this one here is for changing between like daytime mode star night mode and night mode uh, night vision mode and you can also long press it and you'll get um, your picture in picture on off this one here is short press and it starts videoing long press it takes a photo um, and on this one here this is uh, for screen brightness of the eyepiece so you can adjust the brightness as you need to um, dim it down you know sometimes at night you don't need it very bright so it's good it dims down nice and low and it's also for accessing the, accessing the movies you've already recorded and, and you can look through them um, I skipped over one there, there's one in the middle that's the power button um, long press and it turns it on when it's on if you give it a short press it puts it in standby mode um, so you just click it again and it turn, instantly wakes up or if you need to turn it right off you hold it in and it starts turning off um, and then on the very rear of the device is the diopter adjustment and that's just to suit your eye for you know if you need glasses or if you don't need glasses just to get a nice clear picture so that all the menus and the pictures are in good nice focus uh, that's it sort of for the outside all right so i've got the little camera hooked up here i've got it hooked up to a hdmi screen so you guys can actually see because when you look through the eyepiece um, I see a whole heap of the menus and whatnot, and you guys only see the crosshairs if I record it. So, I record it for this HDMI so you can actually see the whole lot. So pretty much we're looking out, um, let's see what this is, we're at 202 metres. This is in daylight mode, and I'm looking down at the river at 202 metres. Um, and I'm zoomed all the way out. Um, you can see on the left hand side there. If I zoom in, it tells you what, what's going on there on the left hand side. You can see it coming in. And if you wind back out, back to the base mag. Um, you can see there, that's the crosshair, and it's actually got a holdover activated. So, whatever profile I've got set up in there, that's um, when you hit with the laser rangefinder. So, you hit it once, it brings up the info on the bottom. Hit it again and it turns the laser range one on and it displays there 202 meters and then it gives you a holdover so there's a little range range one a mark there but that's the holdover for it so 202 meters i think i've got a 22 um long rifle profile on there at the moment um that's where i would need to hold now obviously if you zoom in it's in second focal plane so the crosshair is getting bigger and you can see that holdover as you can see, that is really, really clear too. All right, I'll just zoom back out. I'll um, I'll turn the rangefinder off. All right, so now we're at base mag. I said I am just looking down down the side of down on the side of the river at base mag. There, I'll just move that left to right so you can sort of see. That's uh, I'll put the rangefinder on. We'll see if we can actually get a range of that far. I'm not sure what that is out there. How far away? It's a long way. Probably too far. Yeah, it's 500 meters there. Yeah, out of range. So I'm getting out to 808 yards. But um, after that, sort of, uh, there's probably no good targets out there to hit. Um, I'll just go through some of the menus quickly so you can sort of see. That's what the idea of set this up so you guys can see the menus. So you've got a reticle type. You've got um, a couple of different ones there. You can scroll through. Uh, pretty simple. Change it to what uh, reticle you want. Hold the button and it jumps back out. And you've got now you've got that type of reticle. All right. Um, Obviously you can change colours and that there too. But anyway, we've got the one shot zero setting. If I press that, it takes you through here to one shot zero. Um, so that's all good. You've got the reticle colour, you can change it. Um, your position where you sight it in. Um, you've got ballistic uh, parameters there. So you can turn on a ballistic compensated uh, reticle there. So you can actually put all your details in. I won't go through these lots now. Um, but pretty much you've got, uh, you can save them in a couple of different groups. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's you can put seven different, uh, or five different rifles there. Six, sorry, six, six different, um, six different things there. And you've got to put in your details. So if you've got a ballistic app um, or a dope chart and you've got everything set in, you can put BC of the bullet, 
um, the weight, the speed, the zero distance, the height of the the height of the scope above the uh, above the bore. If you put in bad details, if they're not right, um, it won't do a very good job. Uh, so if you get them right, you do get a ballistic holdover. You can switch there between first and second focal plane. You got a range finder marker alignment. So if you're at night time, um, if you turn your range finder on, you can actually see the infrared. Um, when you're in infrared mode, you can see the flashing of the range finder. So you can move the little the little marker that's on the screen, move it to where the range finder is flashing, just to make sure they actually mark up. You got your ISO sensitivity unit. You can change yards and meters. Screen aspect ratio: you go 16 by 9 or um, 4 by 3, or small for if you're using something that's a very high-powered rifle that would probably maybe kick you back. Um, you can change it to that. Uh, let's go through to the next page. You have movie mode, so you can change that. I've got to set it 4K 30 frames a second. You can go all the way up to 4K 120 frames a second. Um, 4K 30 is good for me. I like that. Uh, you can change your photo resolutions. You can go all up to 48 megapixel. Um, you can change the time of the movie clips where it automatically stops. I've got five minutes there. You can do uh, recoil activated shooting. If you're using it on something that's got a little bit of kick, it'll actually just... Um, it records, it's pretty much recording all the time, and when it kicks it saves like 10 or 15 seconds before and 10 or 15 seconds after. I've got that turned off. Sound recording, obviously. EV exposure. Metering, so you got multi-metering. It's, um, it's like a camera. You have center spot. Multi's good, it goes, multi's pretty much all the same, but maybe center might be good too. Um, brightness. Contrast, saturation. Magnification, magnification adjust, you can change that to like um, how fast it zooms in. I've just got to set to the one. Um, red dot on and off, that's for your little laser. Um, your button backlight, the buttons that actually illuminate at night on the back of the device, just above the eyepiece, you can turn that on or off. Uh, the brightness of the screen, the picture in picture. Um, you can switch between day, starry and night mode. Display icons you can turn on and off. Display widgets on and off, that's for like your gyroscopic and your compass and things like that. You can calibrate your compass, calibrate your dry. You can do the date and logo stamp for the date in. Clock settings, format the SD card, version and card info, and reset. Um, that is pretty much all of what's in the menu. Um, but it is easy to find your way through. Um, let's just have a look at something that's maybe not too far this. I've got some campers over here. Somewhere here, somewhere here. Alright, so at the moment, this is not um this is not on a firearm, so I don't worry about any of that. Let's check the focus. Doesn't look too bad there. I'll just zoom in on that picture there, just so you can sort of, how far is that? And it's really get a range on it, eh? Range to that is 248 yards. All right, so if we zoom in, let's do a bit of digital zoom. So you see, it said back there, you can see up there, it says one. We'll go up to two, three, four, five, six, that's six times zoom. That's probably about where I found it doesn't you can use up to that without it being too pixelated. Like that image actually looks pretty good. That's over 200 meters away. And as you can see, pretty good image. That's looking over water on a hot day. Now I'll zoom back out. That's at its base max. Which, just so you can see that same image that uh, you know, over 200 meters. This is recorded directly through the scope. As you see, you don't see all the info. You can sort of just see the crosshairs. Um, but this is recorded with the audio inside the scope too. So let you hear what the audio from the scope sounds like. And it also, it also comes with a nice little user manual. It's sort of got all the info you sort of need. And um, it's well laid out, lots of Lots of pictures, lots of um, explanations of things. Tells you all the specs, everything you need to know. It gives you good detailed instructions of how to set things up too. Um, as far as a user manual go, as user manuals go, um, especially things sometimes from over from overseas um, using different languages, um, this one is really well written and uh, easily easy to understand and um, very well thought out. Uh, which is a pleasant change because sometimes you know you buy things from overseas sometimes um, where they're speaking different languages sometimes they've been translated and it makes it a bit hard to uh to, to get your head around but 
and this they've explained it really well and the um it's as i said i don't feel like it's, it's translated it's um it's got all the info you want you know that's been written in english it hasn't been translated from a different language and uh, i think that's important because when you've got something that's got as many things that this scope can do um it's handy to be able to have a um a manual that you can keep in with your hunting gear so if you're ever out in the field and something does go a little bit square pear shaped on you you can um work out quickly how to um how to fix the problem and um and get on with your hunt so yeah well done one leaf for uh, writing a good little manual with um lots of explanations and, uh, and making it nice and clear in the english language well today i've got it set up on a pcp air rifle i've zeroed it for 40 yards and we did the one shot zero um, setting so pretty much you fire your shots and then um, I can't actually record it while, it's, while I'm doing it but you fire a couple of shots see where they go on your target and then you go into the one shot zero setting and you move across the crosshair to where the bullets hit so literally it leaves behind like a ghost white crosshair and the red crosshair or green crosshair whatever you're using you move that to where the bullet struck and keep the white ghost hair on the center and then you just um, hit the save button on that and it saves it and the gun zero it worked perfectly so i um, put it smack on first go so uh, pretty impressive now i'm going to take it out to uh i think it's about 77 yards which is a long way for a, an air rifle and it's got a bit of drop and we'll see how that goes so we'll try that now right now i'm going to record this through the scope i'm just going to see if we'll get the focus good on that all right let's zoom in a bit See if we can. Uh... Oh, I can't actually see the silver crosshairs on that target. It's a bit blown out. I might have to aim for some of the patches. Get that focus right again. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to aim for these little patches down here. These couple of blue patches or whatever they are together. I'll just get a range on it. So it's saying 79.5 yards. Now I don't know if you guys can see, but it's actually giving me a hold a holdover spot. So what I'll do is now a holdover spot. So a green circle with a couple of crosses and a red dot on it. It's right. I'm pretty much putting the scope on it now. If you, I don't know if it records that in the image. You know, I'll fire three shots at that, and then we'll go down and have a look and see how it went. Got my rear bag. I should have bought it. Well, I can't really see where they're going with this. blue dots or is that them down there I don't know I'll go check it out okay uh, I'm pretty happy with that so I was aiming just for here and you see I've got one there and two to the right there's a little bit of wind going in here it's actually a little bit left to right uh, right to left sorry but um that's spot on that height is perfect if that was a rabbit's head at 80 meters on an air rifle PCB he'd be a dead rabbit good stuff Are these guys? Hundred and forty yards. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little holdover on there. It's a long shot for a twenty-two.
pretty sure he does. Tony, a little bit all over. Oh, these guys are all nice and clear. What distance is that? 70 yards. 75 yards. 60 yards. That five to six on zoom is pretty clear. And there is a little bit of holdover for him. Just a little bit. Okay, this guy. He's at 64 yards. It's nearly overpowering, isn't it? A little bit of hold over him too. Where is it? 75 metres? I'm not getting those, obviously. Nice and clear, but... Back to um, base mag. Four mag, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. A bit too pixelated there. About nine is pretty good. I find five or six is really clear still. That's six. That heaps of detail on that image. Five is very sweet. Pros and cons. Um, we'll start off with cons. Uh, there's not really a lot on here that are cons because I found it to be uh, everything I expected it to be plus a little bit more. Um, when you're setting up the ballistic calculator, this is the only con that sort of was actually something that was worth mentioning. When you set the ballistic calculator up, you go through your things and it might be like how many grains is the projectile or what's the, um, what's your base mag, uh, sorry, what your height above the scope is, and you dial all of them. But then all of a sudden you come across some that might be like um, the air pressure or, or um, moisture in the air, um, or it might just be... Um, Anything where the numbers are quite variable, you have to sit there and dial this a lot to get through. It'd be really nice when you get to certain parts of the menu if you could do... It might be you might have to change from your elevation, it might be set at 3,000 feet and you're at, like I am here, quite low, under 500 feet above sea level. Um, it does it in very small increments and you sit there and it takes like 10 minutes. I know you probably only have to do it once to set your parameters up. But if you went somewhere really high altitude and started shooting, you would have to change it. So it'd um, be nice if when you go through the menu, if you click over to the decimal point so you can actually go through a bit faster. Um, but besides that, that was about the only con. Um, everything else on it sort of did exactly what I thought it would was going to do. Um, I guess that means we'll go on to pros. Okay. So, <clears throat> I use a ballistic app a lot. Um, and I have on my 22 long rifle, I have a scope that I dial, and I literally spend all night dialing, that scope gets the flogging like that. This one does it inside, so as you would have seen, when you um, take a laser rangefinder reading, and it says this is the, uh, the distance, it literally gives you a holdover mark, a little green circle with a cross through it. I know it doesn't record that on the image, um, when you see the recorded image, but on the screen you would have seen that little holdover mark, and looking through the ice piece, obviously you can see it. That little holdover mark turned out to be, if you put good info in, it gave you good info out. 
I did it um, when I was testing it, I did it on my little piece, 22 PCP, and um, I think it was about 25 centimetres of holdover or something like that that I had to do. But it literally did it straight away. Um, and I did find with the PCP, I was able to shoot things out to about 100 metres, uh, like rabbit sized targets, pretty reliably. Um, there was more the gun letting me down after 100 metres. Um, but it works. So, for a nice change, is I didn't have to muck around for too much. I didn't have to change. I just gave it good info. I had the, I, I put the chronograph down, and I, I already knew the, the velocity of the ammunition I was using and whatnot. And it's a, um, it's a blitzy calculator to work. So, you put the, uh, the range finder on, you hit your target, it gives you a holdover. Obviously, if there's wind, you can sit there and dial it in, or you can just hold a little bit to the left or the right, whichever way the wind's coming from. Um, but as far as the ballistic calculator goes, that works. It worked really easy. I had no trouble setting it up. Um, it was really, really um, self-explanatory, and, um, and it worked. So that is a massive, massive pro. Other pros are the menu system laid out really, really well. Um, found my way through it easy. You virtually didn't even need the book. If you've used any sort of modern-day scope or... Um, or modern day camera type equipment and um, and you know how to use a rifle scope and how to dial things then um, you'll have no dramas with this the menus were really really easy to find my way through well laid out and they did a good job same as the manual it was really well written and explained it all so you've got all that information you need uh, your fingertips with the manual and um, I was able to pull off getting the scope set up really easy using it really easy setting up the blister calculator really easy so um, that's a that's a big pro uh, performance performance is really good massive pro for that um daytime footage it's a camera so you know it never looks as good as a, as a glass optic as true magnification you know as you zoom in it gets a bit digitalized you know it's pixelated because you're zooming in on a um on a digital image but um compared to other things i've used it's it's right up there so i've got no dramas with that um image and performance is great nighttime stuff um i've seen other videos you know when you're researching stuff you know you, there's, it's good there were some other videos out there um, I've watched some other videos and I thought that this uh, IR might be a bit of a limiting factor um, but for me having used lots of uh, night vision devices um, I actually had not too much drama um, as long as you don't zoom in too much um, I found this little IR illuminator more than capable uh, for like rim fire distances you know 130 140 150 meters you know like a 17 HMR um, this lit things up well and I could clearly see what I was shooting at you just don't zoom in too far with the with the digital zoom and um, just remember to run this on its higher power and zoom it in as you zoom the, the scope in um, remember to zoom this guy in don't leave it too wide otherwise it does look like you need a better IR illuminator um, I was very happy with this IR illuminator I don't think I would bother to um, upgrade it um, I guess that's it with the pros um, about the only other thing I might add is um, the hardware that come with it uh, that's a big pro these scope rings and that are actually quite nice a lot of times when you buy even some things that are much more expensive than this one the rings and that that are provided are very so-so i found these ones are quite good and i was able to take this off one firearm and put it to another and go back and it actually returned the zero quite well so um i um i was pretty happy with these um these mounts and um just a picatinny mount but um I think uh, you'll be pretty happy with these and you probably won't have to upgrade them normally every time i buy something like this i have to factor in how much it costs to uh, buy some better rings because they're normally not that great these ones were um were good more than adequate and i guess that's it for the pros conclusion ah oh, right um hmm, where do i start with this guy actually i'll tell you what i'm going to do with it so that'll give you an idea what i think about it um i shoot for those of you who don't know me um i have a trapping poisoning you know baiting type uh service so obviously i have to uh, humanely destroy animals that have been trapped and things like that and quite often um there's a bit of a cleanup job at the end where i do where i use a, a fire on the cleanup animals i wasn't able to trap or um or poison or bait you know type scenario so probably the main gun i use is a 22 long rifle for every round i have lots of fancy guns but for every round i shoot out of them i'll probably shoot 100 more out of a 22 lr um at the moment I have a setup with that with a zero tech scope that's dialable, MOA dialable at the top. I have it marked for every 10 meters and I use a range finder that's in my thermal in my thermal scanner and I just dial and I use that like crazy. It's super effective, it works great. With a night vision add-on at the back, I should say, for nighttime work. I'm gonna take that off and put this on. Um, this thing made it so quick, the image quality, 
um, the comfort levels of the screen of the back being able to dim the screen down nicely and it's got a, a reasonable size uh, screen to look at in the eye box um, I'm going to take that scope set up off um, and I've been super happy with that and I've tried probably a dozen different things on that this is going to replace that um, the only thing I might have now I might have to buy another one for my PCP air rifle because I tried it on that and it was fantastic just the ability to have a good image, identify what, you, what you're seeing um, you know, for target ID, and then use the rangefinder quickly. It makes the process really fast. You can range find something, you get a hold over on your crosshair, aim on it, bang, it works, it hits, and um, no more dialing. So I think that's where this guy's gonna go live. I just have to get a Picatinny mount for me 22. Uh, a Picatinny rail mount on it. But uh, that's where it is. So. That's a pretty big thing for me because like I said I've been using that one in that format for a couple of years now and I'm super happy with it. But this is better. Um, so I'm going to use it at this. I use thermal. I use thermal scanners. I use night vision. I use thermal scopes. I use lots of different stuff. Um, and this one has, um, this one's really surprised me. The build quality on it is fantastic. Everything's pretty much metal. There's not really any plasticky junk parts running on it. It comes from batteries. It comes with everything you need on it. Um, and then to lop it off, it comes at a really good price. So, um, do I recommend this? Yeah. If you want to start getting into a digital scope type world where you actually can have multiple um, save things, so you can change this from firearm to firearm, you can have different ballistic setups um, saved in there. So you can have like your 22, your PCP air rifle, maybe your, um, you might use 30 caliber subsonic. You can save all these different profiles um, for different rifles and you can pretty much switch it from one gun to the other and um, the joy is you can have different points of aim um, saved in there for different ammunition as I said for instance you might use a 308 and you may have subsonic loads and you may have um, full house loads and you instead of having to dial it around you literally go for the menu change it to the different uh, projectile you're using the different speed the different ballistics profile and it all works again you've got a different point of aim and you can save that for several rifles in there and um, it makes it super versatile so yes if you're looking to get into something but you don't want to spend super big dollars um, I recommend this one I've only had it for like two weeks and um, but I have used it a lot I've been testing it like crazy and uh, and had some chances to go hunting with it and everything like that. I didn't put no kill shots in this video I will if you want to see kill shots with this um, Hit the subscribe button because in other videos I do, this will be used. You will see this scope on my channel now. Um, I've been really, uh, really impressed with it, to be honest, because um, at its price point, it probably shouldn't be as good as it is. Um, but I've been super impressed with it, and I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to use it, and um, you will see this in other future videos. So if you want to see kill shots and how this works, um, yeah, hit the subscribe button. Also, this is available in a four times base mag model. Um, so it's like four to, I don't know, 50 something times zoom. But it's all digital. Remember, it's all digital. I personally like a wide field of view. So I went for the, with the uh, two power one. But if I want to use this on something like a, um, a higher end, something like a 17 HMR or a um, 223, I would go the four times base mag. Um, just a bit more magnification at base mag. But for all your standard rimfire stuff, 22s, air rifles, 22 magnum, um, subsonic, um, higher caliber rifles two times base mag is beautiful and you still have got the digital zoom which um works pretty good um it doesn't get too pixelated i got to about five or six and the, the image still looks really good as you would have seen um that's it that's my conclusion if you like this one check them out i'll put a link in the description so you can um see this and see what the price is on that um the ballistic range the ballistic calculator setup is uh, if you've got an older model of this you can upgrade it with the latest firmware this one with it this is the eagle that came with it already in there um, the the, uh, the range finder is an optional extra so when you get the base model you pretty much get the scope and the uh, IR illuminator but for a bit extra you can get the um, the range finder and if you want to use the ballistic calculator you obviously need to have that um, and I'd recommend if you use it on smaller caliber stuff um, or something with a the, you know the projectile arc is a little bit loopy like a 22 then uh, or an air rifle then uh, I highly recommend getting it with the laser rangefinder um, because it really just um, it makes your life so easy so yeah I'm looking forward to using this um, and um, you will see this on plenty of my videos to come so yeah I think that's about it spending more time I'm just waffling 
all right um, as I said I'll leave a link in the description to where you can check these out um, I don't make no money off of this I don't care if you buy it, if you don't I'm not trying to sell you something you don't want I just like to get good info um, but there are other reviews on this you can check them out some guys show some different stuff in different scenarios um, I'm really happy with it and as I said I'm so impressed with it. this is going to take the place on my 22 long rifle which is the gun I'll probably use the most out of all my firearms so on that note if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more stuff like this reviews and some hunting videos I've got lots of hunting videos on there now um, hit the subscribe button check out some of those hunting videos okay bye for now